What's going on, Air of Carthage here, back in Total War, Warhammer 2, and we're going to have some tournament play. I'm going to slow it down just for a second to cover the armies. Uh, we're going to have, this is a matchup actually from the Crump, De Crumpen Cup, which was hosted by Wicked and Happy Puppy uh, back on July 4th. This is a round two matchup, I believe, between Uncle Gant, who's a, a member of the community uh, in my Discord and a member of the XMT clan, and Prussian Prince, who's a longtime caster of Total War series, um, a person that I've loved for a long time in the Total War community. He played a lot of competitive play in other Total War games, has been playing a whole lot more in Warhammer 2 recently, and is a pretty solid player overall in uh, RTS and in uh, just Total War in general. And then we've got, um, obviously, Uncle Gant is a very capable player. I've played a lot of battles with him. So it's going to be really too uh, cool to see these two come up against each other again. Prussian Prince is playing as Bretonia. He's got some peasants up front, men-at-arms and some battle pilgrims here. Or, sorry, just all men-at-arms in the second line. I am going to stop it for just a minute. We've got some Defenders of the Fleur de Lis, which is our Knight's Errant. Um, so, and it has Frenzy. And we've got uh, Lewin up in the air. Uh, Lewin is going to be supported uh, by a Damsel. And the Damsel... Where is the Damsel? I lost track of her. <laughs> right here, the Damsel of Life. Okay, I knew she was out here. Sorry. And then uh, there's going to be some Knights of the Realm. Uh, more Knights Errant and Questing Knights, so just a ton of cavalry, and then a couple of Field Trebuchets to provide some range, because the Empire is really good at packing range itself. You can see some Mortars here, probably intended for Archers. There's a Free Company Militia guarding it, and then for the rest of Uncle Gant's army, there's some Empire Knights, the Royal Altdorf Griffites, which is a terror-causing uh, Demigriff Knight with Halberd, and then uh, we have some Infantry across this middle line. you got the Sigmar Sun Swordsman. And then some spearmen and more swordsmen up front, supported by a witch hunter. Witch hunter does have the accusation ability. And we'll check out this other ability, too, just to make sure we oh, know everything that's going to be here. There's the skull of Gatan, which is going to reduce a power rate or power recharge uh, for units. So anyway, let's go ahead and hit play. Three pistoliers leading the way for the Empire. And uh, Prussian Prince is targeting them with the trebuchets. And honestly, that's a fair target for the trebuchets right now. These Pistoliers are pretty large uh, targets, and the Trebuchet has a decent chance of killing them on impact. Taking away ammunition from the Pistoliers early in the fight is really not going to matter. Uh, but the Trebuchets could also be used against uh, infantry units, of course, or free company militia. See the peasants here trying to come in and uh, kind of blunt uh, the charges for the chief infantry, and Lewin is going to move ahead here. Uh, Lumen is not in any immediate danger from like being netted or anything. The magic here is an Amber Wizard. And there is the transformation spell to summon a Feral Manticore. And you can see that uh, Boris here on the horse, he decided to get in a fight early with Lewin using Accusation, but it is not going well. And then the defenders of the Fleur de Lis have showed up on the scene and charged right on through to the Pistoliers and actually managed to catch them. Now the Royal Altdorf Griffites are going to come in there and the defenders of the Fleur de Lis are uh, going to get themselves ripped a new hole by the Altdorf Griffites, but there's Questing Knights rolling in, and Questing Knights are going to be very good against the uh, the Griffites as long as they don't get countercharged. And so the Griffites should find themselves taking a lot of damage. Lewin's going to swoop in to help as well. And the Empire is getting overwhelmed in the middle. The Summon Manticore could help a lot by getting in on Lewin and helping to take him down. And just as far as the rest of the fight's going, you see the Pistoliers pulled back to try and get a little better position. Empire Knights trying to stop some Knights of the Realm, but Knights of the Realm are going to win that fight head-to-head. -head. And uh, you can see here the Free Company Militia in the back firing away. This is helpful, but they're not the armor-piercing gun variants uh, like their handgun brothers, so not sure exactly how that'll turn out here. Now, old Toddy Toddbringer um, is being assisted by the Manticore and uh, the Altdorf Griffites, and, they, and he's doing okay. Lewin is taking some damage, but he's got the Shield of Thorns up right now, which is giving him some physical resistance and helping out uh, in this uh, current fight. There's nothing providing any magic damage up against Lewin at the moment. You can see here that the uh, Prussian Prince really working the cavalry at all angles here. The Empire's front lines collapsed. Bretonia has some units that are regrouping, moving back towards the fight. I love the positioning of the field trebuchets. If the Empire wants to take them out, it's got to dedicate the resources to go way out there and do it. And so I like how they're placed way out on the flanks, way away from the battle. There's a lot of cavalry early. Prussian Prince realizes there's no real threat to him. Leave him alone. Let him fire from the background and give their value. At this point, Uncle Gant is uh, looking to be in some pretty rough shape. Uh, he's got to take out Lewin, and Lewin gets a nice charge from the air down on Boris. Though a Manticore is going to come in and try and help even up this fight. But the Manticore nor 
Boris have a um, armor piercing, like uh, large armor piercing values. And at this point, the uh, the Bretonians have more infantry in this blob, and then the Damsel of Life is here to support too. So, although Lewin's going to take some damage, he's in a pretty good position, and even the uh, Manticore's rampaging at the moment. So that's not looking particularly good for the Empire. You see the Empire Knights here trying to fight back the Questing Knights. It won't work. <laughs> the Questing Knights are going to be uh, doing well. Now, the Griffites do come in to help support. That could actually turn this fight. But, I mean, the Questing Knights really chew through armor, and it's going to make them pretty good for this melee where they're not taking brutal charges from other cavalry. They'll uh, chip through a lot of armor. See, the Pistoliers here are still alive, uh, but Boris got routed. He got terrified, and that is really bad. You can see the Pistoliers now, and this is a really cool play by Uncle Gant. He knows he needs to save Boris. Boris can heal, um, and so he's swinging his Pistoliers around here, chasing Lewin, trying to do everything he can to turn uh, these pursuing units off of Boris because he desperately needs Boris to try and have any chance to uh, finish this fight with the victory. Look at this back here. The Questing Knights did eventually get beaten by the Empire Knights and the Royal Altdorf Griffites, but they put up a pretty good fight. Here come some Knights of the Realm here to help support that. There's peasants in there to provide some body blocking as well. And this is really key out here. Lewin's able to land. He's trying desperately to just really take Boris out of this fight. And you can see the Pistoliers desperately attempting to get these Questing Knights and Lewin off of Boris before he shatters or gets too close to the edge of the map. And uh, you're going to see a desperation play here as the uh, Pistoliers charge into melee with the Questing Knights, which is pretty risky, but the Questing Knights are pretty thrash and it works. Uh, but that still hasn't got Lewin off the case here. They continue to fire, but the Pistoliers just aren't going to cause big damage to Lewin. And you can see there Lewin landed a hit. Uh, again, another desperation charge into melee to try and save Boris. Meanwhile, back here, there's just very little left for the Empire. Uh, Bretonia is just running over their units. There is some infantry, but it's way off, and it's got to make its way back. Bretonia has a lot of knights still on the field, albeit spread out. You can see that uh, Lewin was stopped just long enough to bring Boris back into play. But again, Boris, without being on his griffin, he just cannot put out the uh, damage here that Lewin can in return because of the armor piercing values that Lewin gets and Prussian Prince is going to carry game one rather nicely here with Bretonia so good game to both players interesting armies from both players I like that Bretonia was very true to kind of the stereotype that's in our heads right tons of knights uh, and, and it was a nice mix of knights knights of the realm questing knights knights errant uh, one regiment of renown in there the knights of the fleur de lis so very cool combination of knights and infantry here for Prussian Prince with King Lewin leading it and a damsel of life is never a bad pick for Bretonia there are other good picks for your damsels but I mean never never a bad pick at all I'm gonna see here some final charges into the Sigmar Sons uh, which is an unbreakable unit for the Empire so that's the only reason the match hasn't ended yet there goes the last one and let's take a go go take a quick look at the stats screen here uh, Prussian Prince, again, uh, nice victory for him, and uh, good game by Uncle Gant. This one didn't turn out as a victory for him, but again, Uncle Gant's great. Uh, I love playing with him in battles. Uh, both of these players are a lot of fun. I've played battles in the past with Prussian Prince, and he sent me some on Warhammer, so it's awesome to have him in the tournament. And same for Uncle Gant, since uh, he's uh, you know always been active with me in the Discord, which I've always loved. In any case, um, yeah, you can see kind of their, their plays here. Look at this. I mean, Prussian Prince spreading the damage out across quite a few units which is always good to see when a lot of your units can be fairly effective. And kind of the same story for the Empire, right? No one unit here doing all the work for the Empire. As you can see the players making lots of their units useful. I think that just the cavalry here was just too overwhelming for the Empire, right? Um, the Empire would have had to have a couple of units of Demigriff Knights to try and contend with this, and they may still have gotten overwhelmed. Uh, that extra cost of bringing another Demigriff Knight would complicate matters. An interesting combination, though. Witch Hunter, Amber Wizard... Toddbringer. Now remember that the Witch Hunter can use Accusation, and if you combine that with, say, maybe like a Transformation where the Manticore comes in and attacks another unit while its stats are low, it could be pretty devastating. Also remember the Witch Hunter does decent missile damage against big targets like Lewin. He can sit back 
and try to do a little fighting uh, of his own, as well as supporting infantries and a little bit of melee, especially against Bretonia, who doesn't come with a lot of armored infantry. So an interesting pick indeed. Not something I would have expected. Um, and a uh, cool pick. And again, congrats to uh, Preston Prince on the win here. This is a best of three series, though. And, uh, I, you know, obviously I'm going to show you uh, the next battle. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, it will be coming out soon as well.